Awesome. Th thanks, Brian. And, uh, and, and I agree, uh, at the, that jetpack ride over uh, our nodes, uh, TSC, TSC land is, um, is always staggering in terms of the amount that's going on. Um, and actually, if I go back to Brian's opening, I, you know, as, as I reflect on, uh, around the, the chaos and the complexity and the heartbreak that we've been amidst, um, I keep going back to, you know, the, the, the famous quote from Fred Rogers of, of look for the helpers. And, and I'm just so encouraged um, when I look at all of the activity within Hyperledger and all of what Brian described around the responses to whether it was PPE or supply chains, uh, you know, or, or inclusion and, and just the, the response of this community uh, is just is, is so encouraging and, and just, you know, it fires me up to, you know, to, to do even more and to connect in. And so I, I'm going to spend a little bit of time um, and, and I, uh, like Brian, suffer from wanting to, and our notes, suffering from, you know, wanting to cram too much content into too little time. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to channel my inner New Yorker and uh, talk a million miles an hour and hopefully uh, plant, an, you know, plant enough seeds for some great hallway, hallway or breakout conversations uh, later. So, um, so with that in mind, I, I want to cover um, three, three fundamental areas, the whole sustainability and inclusion space. Uh, the whole no notion of, of governance and operation and kind of the you know, where, where we are in this innovation wave uh, with this technology. And then, uh, and then a little bit of a forward look around the combinatorial uh, value of technologies. And, and to, to Brian's point around our focus of multi-party systems and the recognition of the, of the variety of architectural patterns uh, and technologies at play with fundamentally rethinking how business ecosystems work. Uh, I'll, I'll try to land there. So um, just jumping straight into it, and, and really the slides are there for just for just back you know backdrop here to for my talk track. Um, you know, I, I, Brian highlighted a few of the key focal areas. If I just you know again take a giant step back and think about the meaning. Of this technology and, and the meaning of, of what it is that we're working on. Um, ultimately, in my mind, you know, transparency drives accountability, but more, even more important, empathy and empathy leading to action. And so the whole notion of shared data infrastructure, the whole notion of being able to connect connect parties across an ecosystem in, um, in new ways and have uh, single sources of truth and that transparency of information and this focus on, um, on what, you know, more on what are, we, what are we sharing versus what are, we, what are we keeping secret and putting behind, you know, behind the wall gardens that were, were referenced, I think is then just a tremendous trigger for what is also going on, which is the deepening and widening of the digital divide. And so when we think of digital inclusion um, and, and the, the barriers to entry that have ex existed before that are now just e getting even worse, the importance of, um, of the Hyperledger community's focus on digital identity with Indy and Aries, uh, the importance of rethinking money um, and, the, and the work that Brian referenced that we have a major focus on around central bank digital currency and, and the public good uh, that, that a, a digitally native form of money uh, in, you know, entails and, and drives. This is just massively important as we rethink uh, the billion people in this world who don't have access to any form of identity and are, that, are being left that much further behind um, to work with ID2020, the World Economic Forum, World Bank. There are just a whole host of, of parties uh, together that you know, we're reaching those first moments where we have governmentally approved constructs for working with the verifiable credentials and whether um, you know, it's, it's you know, border crossing and travel, which has to, has to get underway and, and the work that's uh, going on between you know, with uh, especially in Canada and uh, and the Netherlands around the Don't Traveler Digital Identity Initiative and that focus on Indian Aries, we've talked about this for years. It's hitting a whole never whole other level of intensity. Or the work around uh, how is it that we get back to work and how do we prove that we've had the vaccine? How do we understand um, you know what we can do when and being able to work in a way that um, you know that that is uh, you know that is going to be a challenge for the for the in digitally included. If we're not focused on those that are unbanked, underbanked, or don't have any form of recognized identity, um, we're just we're just missing uh, just a critically important focus. And um, and and we're not. Sorry, I should say it differently. We're not missing it. <laughs> this community is on on that mission. And the more that we can do to work together, um, you know, is just going to be super important. If I extend that, we're seeing the first motions around 
really fundamentally rethinking the whole carbon economy, the whole, and it's not just carbon credits, although that's a really important part of it. Um, if we think about the, you know, all of the challenges around the, the authenticity and genuine nature of, uh, of carbon credits and, uh, and their mission, but, you know, equally, if not more importantly, the, the behaviors around actually reducing carbon footprints across the board. Again, this is underpinned by the, the veracity, the authenticity, the genuine nature of the tokens that can be created to be associated with the carbon sinking behaviors, uh, you know, that to be able to be certain that they, the actual uh, environmental or, or other benefits were actually achieved and, and endure. Um, and how do we have that shared, shared, shared view into that world? How do we have that play into, into the, you know, the ecosystems around this? Um, and then, you know, building from there, as we think about what's next and what's new, you know, the, the whole basis for the circular economies uh, that, that need to you know, continue to mature at speed to make sure that we're, you know, that we're, you know, reusing, but also thinking about the fairness and the responsibility, um, you know, in the, in the mix around uh, the circular, uh, you know, circular uh, supply chains. Um, a lot of work underway right now around what we call N-tier supply chain. Um, most, you know, traditionally, when we've looked at this whole space, whether it's order to, ca order to cash, procure to pay, logistics, trade finance, these have all been largely independent domains with their own platforms, their own focus. And at the end of the day, they've all been ultimately talking about the same pallet of goods or the, you know, the same goods that are, are moving through it. And so uh, that ability to bring those ecosystems together and not just talk about the buyer and supplier relationship, but the supplier, 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 supplier's relationship all the way back to the original action of, of pulling something out of the earth or sewing it together or that, that earliest, uh, earliest player in a supply chain and the fairness and inclusion that goes along with that. And if I go back to the theme of this whole space, that transparency, um, you know, being able to then drive empathy and action as we think about how to make supply chains more fair and equitable and link the original producers through to the end consumers, just wildly important. And there's wildly productive things that are, that are kicking off in this community. And it's just great to see. On, on, the, on the, you know, it is Pride Month and, and uh, you know, I'm, we're really proud of the video that we showed at the beginning. You know, our focus on, on being inclusive as a community um, again, I've just been impressed with the lean in from this wider community and, and, uh, and the dialogue and the action, the effort. I'm really proud of um, Peter uh, Somo, Somo Gavari. I just butchered his name. So uh, Peter S is what we usually call him. Uh, Peter, I'm sorry. Uh, um, you know, he recognized uh, that we, had a, we've pro we have issues with our code. You know, just the, the, the use of language within code and, and he, he just on his own, you know, raised his hand and, and or, or just, you know, put hand on keyboard um, and created some code to be able to search for inappropriate language, non-inclusive language in the code that we're writing. Um, it's, it's efforts like this that across the board, our thoughtfulness, our empathy, our ability to reach out and form communities. Um, it's one of the special things about Hyperledger uh, and it's something that we just, you know, we just can't, can't emphasize enough and, and I love the lean in and we've got to do a lot more. Um, if I pivot, sorry, I'm in control of these slides. Um, if, I, if I pivot to the next topic, um, governance and operation may sound like the most, you know, <laughs> Um, you know, a, a hard right turn from, um, from you know, what, what I've just talked about with sustainability and inclusion. Um, but at the heart of it, we're at the stage now with this technology and the work that's being done. Arnaud talked about the, island, the islands of implementation. I love that analogy. We, we talk about it that way all the time. Um, if we're not focusing on the interoperability enough and, and we're leaning in with this on, on Cactus and, um, and our partnering one, you know, great conversations with IBM around Weaver and, um, and we'll now, now talk about the, the new one um, around how to bring these together. Um, interoperability being critically important, but if I layer in some other aspects, if we're not building solutions that drive confidence in the ecosystems. If we're not able to demonstrate what, what it is, uh, apply what it is to have systemically important infrastructure and build that confidence in these early, early solutions that are gaining scale and starting to connect those islands together uh, to be interoperable, um, you know, we're, we're gonna be, you know, we're, we're going to slow this, slow the pace of this. And, and let me turn it around and say it more positively. I love the lean in from a lot from a number of different players around taking all of the exuberance 
the brilliance, the innovation from, from the start of the community and from, from all of the players around what's possible, balanced with the depth of experience in the industry around, around how things work, um, also balanced with dropping those orthodoxies around how things should work or have always worked. And, and there's, a, there's a number of needles to thread there in terms of taking the best of the, the nuanced complexities of a healthcare industry, of the core of financial services um, that, you know, that is not easily recognized or, or transparent to, um, to a startup that has a fantastic idea or, or a team that has a fantastic idea within an enterprise, how to match that up with that industry depth to, to jointly challenge the orthodoxies and build to the core requirements that we all in this community know for you know, for enterprise corporate government solutions around what systemically important infrastructure looks like. The predictability, the scalability, the security, the auditability, the, uh, the recourse, all of the characteristics that, that when you, we get to Main Street are absolutely required to, to have effective, enduring solutions that, that, that drive true value at scale. Uh, that balance is critically important. And it's, it's certainly a big theme of our work with clients and with members of, of this community as we think about how to implement responsible technology. Um, and and if, I, if I really emphasize that word, um, and I'm jumping, I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit here. Uh, the, the, the whole notion where we're, we've all heard the term of let's, let's have security by design built into our solutions. Let's have we have lots of talk now about how do we build privacy by design into our solutions. I think in this space, our ability to focus on the key characteristics of systemically important infrastructure and sustainability and inclusion, I think we add, you know, how do you build responsibility and inclusion by design into our solutions? And, and empathy into our solutions. And if you put those things together and maybe two more that we can collectively brainstorm, you know, if, if, we're, built, if we're having security, privacy, responsibility, and empathy built into our solutions by design, um, we then are getting closer to the whole notion of trust by design. And, and that's really what's needed to be able to drive these, these solutions at scale in, in an effective manner. And I don't use that word lightly. I, I hate how the word trust is thrown about um, you know, loosely. I think this community's ability to get to, get to come together and talk about uh, the principles, I think Arnaud's statement, or, you know, a statement a few minutes ago around when is it too soon or too, you know, when is the right moment to talk about standards? Um, all of this plays together because I think the defining characteristic of this community is, is that mission to build enterprise quality solutions that can drive the trust in the general public, that can reach value at scale, um, that can connect and, and match with all of the social, you know, so societal values and policies that we all want to live by, uh, you know, again, tying back to inclusion and empathy uh, and, uh, and, and underpinning real value. Um, so, let me pivot to the to the you know to the last concept that I want to spend some time on is um, you know looking out ahead at what comes next and and a lot of discussion I can think back to um, to you know our event in Canada and um, throughout throughout the Hyperledger events we've talked about the combinations with other technologies it's becoming even more important of an opportunity. Um, and, and connecting these dots, whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's with, uh, you know, extended reality, quantum computing, AI, classically machine learning, confidential compute, uh, you know, IoT, the ability to stitch together the valuable components of these technologies and think through the combinatorial value is, is crucial. Um, you know, many of you have heard me talk about, you know, there's, there's always that moment when we're engaged in a large scale transformation where we've got a group of, of, of business runners and, and architects in a room and we're presenting the solution and, and you know, someone, someone will chime up looking at the big, you know, big logical or, or technical architecture diagram and said, well, I thought this was blockchain. Um, and, you know, and you kind of point to the lower, you know, the lower corner of that architecture diagram and said, it is, and, and here's the really crucial component of it, but you need everything else that wraps together around it, um, you know, to make it work because ultimately, uh, ultimately the, you know, the DLT aspects are, are primarily the systems of record part of it. And you need the systems of engagement and, uh, and, and reporting and the like. And so, um, the, the one piece that I want to call out, um, and almost as a, as a, 
not a call to arms, but a, a, an invitation uh, to the community to join on us, join, um, join in the discussion and to work together on is, um, I really think that we are, see, we are at the beginning of the end of, of our 2D world. I think this conference where we're looking at each other on flat screens, uh, I think we're gonna look back in five, six, seven, eight years, and we're gonna say, how stupid was that? I think we're gonna we're gonna realize that that the orthodoxy that we've long held uh, because of the limitations of the hardware that our digital world that by you know logically is unbounded in its in its uh, creativity and uh, you know is uh, is artificially constrained in two dimensions. We have this notion even in our language of of uh, click for the page. Uh, you know, in, in effect is a direct pull from, you know, flipping the page in the catalog, right? If we think about 2D commerce um, and, you know, of, of the old, uh, you know, catalogs we would get in the mail. And so the, the, the giant leaps forward around extended reality and virtual reality, creating truly immersive digital experiences. Um, when we think about what that means and what it needs, it, if we're not going to take the headset off, to execute the transaction, enter the credit card number, be able to identify ourselves. Um, you know, if we have to do that, we lose, <laughs> and we're and we're holding on to the old orthodoxies. What we, we you know, what's a, what's in front of us is to be able to fundamentally rethink this this immersive world that we can build in a digital construct with the hardware that's available. To be able to identify oneself in a virtual environment, to be able to identify the agent and associate the entitlements of that agent to ourselves as they act in a, in a virtual capacity. To be able to the ability to work with a digitally native currency in that virtual environment um, to make you know to make a, the you know the transactions and payments and the exchange of value. Um, you know, seamless and easy. There's just a massive, wild innovation frontier uh, that's that's ahead of us. That's going to play out over the next few years, and it is founded and underpinned by our work here in Hyperledger around the whole notion of of digital objects, of being able to have a unique object in the digital world for which you can definitively know who owns it. You know, I hold it right now and I pass it to Brian and now Brian holds it and I don't. And that ability to have a unique digital object, its entitlements to encode the business logic into it, all of these are the predicate capabilities to be able to create that immersive 3D world that the hardware now is unlocking for us to be able to make, you know, make pragmatic and and tap into just you know incredible value pools that are ahead of us and so I want to call that one out in particular because it does tie together so many different of our core elements of identity of currency of shared infrastructure of digital objects um, if you want to you know we've been talking about digital objects for years if you want to just substitute nft god bless but you know it's uh, we've we, we've all been at this for years uh, and I'm, I'm slow to I'm slow to not not refer to it as a digital object um, but uh, but that you know that that's crucially important, and then take it a step further. And in terms of the combination of technologies, that integration between our physical world and our digital world is going to be that much more important. That ability to definitively associate that digital object to the physical one or the physical human, um, and the relationship between the two, again, predicated on shared data infrastructure, uniqueness of credentials, and the like. And we we are the predicate capabilities for that world that, that's, that's going to get unlocked. And so the more that we can now raise up and look, uh, you know, look over the parapet and, and or let me use, go back to what our node referenced, uh, build those bridges between the islands of technology. I'm, I'm twisting the analogy now. Um, you know, building the bridges to the other technical domains and the possibilities and creating the combination architectures uh, that, that bring, you know, extended reality, quantum computing, distributed ledger technology, confidential compute, uh, AI, IoT together uh, is just w wildly important. It's some of the most fun that we're having uh, and, will, and will yield just incredibly, uh, I think, inspiring uh, you know, progress um, across a number of different domains. So um, I, I've, I've hopefully planted a few seeds around things that, that fire me up and, um, and that I'm you know, really proud to, to be engaged with this community uh, to, to work uh, and drive towards a much better future. Uh, I, I love this, uh, you know, the, the, this, this phrase of, of let's, let's, let's join together, let's do incredible things, 
I think this community has got such a such a massive set of resources and experience and skills and in, innovative thinking. Uh, I just uh, every time I spend time with the hyperledger community, I'm I'm inspired, uh, inspired to and engaged, and uh, and we find lots more dot dots to connect. And that's what the hyperledger global forum is all about: is is let's connect more of those dots, let's join together, uh, and let's drive some really uh, in, inclusive, sustainable, valuable, responsible technology-based change. Brian, let me turn it back over to you. Thank you, David. I uh, really mind expanding. I uh, really appreciate all the references to different technologies and touch points there. Um, I'd love to, to also highlight and, and thank Accenture. Uh, there's two things coming up uh, today that I want to make sure all of you attend. One is a session on diversity and inclusiveness hosted by Accenture taking place uh, about halfway through the different sessions. So you'll see it on the agenda there. Um, be sure and come to that. That's that's right at about a, a break time, but it's, it's a nice chunky 30 minutes of uh, of, uh, really great content, again, centering diversity in, in so much of what we do. Also want to highlight uh, an experience event uh, happening after the sessions are over. This is as close as we get to uh, kind of a, a chance to let our hair down. Uh, I hear there's some interesting trivia questions as well uh, at that event, so I will see many of you there. Um, David, thanks for all your support for the Hyperledger community, and we'll see you again soon. Brian, thank you for your leadership, and uh, yeah, glad to be here. Thanks.